Good morning. Good to see you out there. And yet, we think we need a bigger auditorium. Hmm. <laughs> so, 2023 Resident Satisfaction Survey. What I'm going to, I just want to prepare you. I understand that some of the slides are going to be difficult to read. What I did is when we're done with this, we post it to the portal. And what we do is we put it in the library in case somebody wants to look at it. So if you want to go back and you want to review it and you want to make a comparison, you're welcome to do so. I've tried to do as much of that as I possibly could when it relates to 2022 in this survey. And we'll get, in, we'll get into that in a minute. So as you know, we have four categories. You're either very satisfied, satisfied, dissatisfied, or very dissatisfied. When we, give, when we give our numbers, we're talking about people that are either satisfied or very satisfied. So if you see it, it's 90%, 90% of the people who responded to that particular question are either satisfied or very satisfied. Interesting statistics. Uh, of course, I love statistics. It always tells the story. In this particular case, I'm just going to kind of focus. You can go back to 2020 uh, when you see that the number of females were 285, and guys, they outnumbered us two to one. What a country, huh? Um, and at that particular time in 21, it changed it. Now, please keep in perspective, that's not the entire campus. Those are the people who responded to the survey. So. There, as, as you can see, as we go, we've gone through the last number of years, we've had fewer and fewer people respond to the survey. Last year it was 313, this year it was 300. Even though you add 196 and 103, I know that comes to 299, but you look at another question where somebody responded to, and it changes the number to 300. So the number we have is last year, 313 people responded, this year, 300 people responded. The other interesting thing is this year, 70 people responded via paper. That means a lot of you, 230, responded online through the portal. We, that's, that's what we like to see. Now, why do we like to see that? Because those results calculate just like that. As soon as you hit enter, it goes into an Excel spreadsheet for us, and we don't have any other information to mess with. If you fill it out on paper, we have Joy, who it takes hours to go ahead and input each and every answer to those questions. So those are the numbers. So you'll see that in 2020, about 67% of the people who responded were women. This year, it's 65.5, and then it relates to men, 33% and 34.5%. That's how it relates in regards to males and females. Couples. This is, this, it too, is something I find very interesting. Again, in 2020, we had, I'm not sure what we did in 2020 to get so many people to respond. Um, I think that was that post-pandemic and people were um, happy with some of the things that we were, do, we were doing. And when they responded, we, we got a good response in regards to that. Since then, you can see now we went down in 21 and it's st slowly starting to climb up. The number of singles is down from an, uh, really kind of an all-time low of 133 and couples are 167 that's 56 44 if you want to you want to look at that 56 percent of the people are couples and 44 percent are single average age you would expect this now to keep this in perspective while you see the one line goes down severely it goes down to 82.11 um, and it looks like it's a big decline. The average age is 82.9. Why is that? Is you have people that come in, and it doesn't make it makes it doesn't make a difference really, with the exception of a few continuing care retirement communities or life plan communities, what the average age is, because you can throw a number, you can throw a circle around 83, and almost everybody is in that circle between 82 and 84, is the average age regardless of anything else that you do. Some people come in at an earlier age and then um, have been in the community longer, which pulls that, again, pulls that average age up. 
but the average age of our resident right now, let's call it 83, and you can see that it really hasn't moved significantly in years. Um, average age as a resident, you'll see that is that has declined. You'll see that uh, even pre-COVID, that uh, that went down. 2019 went down to 5.74. We went up slightly, and then again, um, it's 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 at 5.62. What does that tell us? Well, normally in continuing care retirement communities, like with anything, there's a cycle. How long is that cycle? Typically, eight years, seven, eight years is the normal cycle. Joe, what do you mean by that cycle? Well, while you may have some residents that have been here 20 plus years, you'll have other residents that are only here four or five. You'll have some, um, whether they move out or they have a celestial discharge, as we like to refer to that, um, that moves this number. And when you hit your eight-year cycle, you'll have more people that will have a celestial discharge than others. In this past year, the last couple of years, we've had more of those than we typically have. So you'll see that that number, that number has gone down, and we expect that number to kind of level off, be somewhere, in, stay in that particular area. But that is, that is one of the things that you, you want to look at um, and we expect it to start start climbing again. Make sense? No? <laughs> well, then I'll come back to that. Um, this is the residents. These are the people that completed a survey based upon the, based upon their residents. Apartments um, were 31, cottages were 175, and villas were 93. What do you notice there? You notice that as we've gone through, the growing trend is more and more villas. As we add more villas, those residents complete the surveys. You'll notice that even though we have more people in cottages, we have less people completing um, surveys that live in the cottages. Why? Why? We think that's a great question. We can't figure it out. Now, last year, of the total number of surveys completed, 8%, so 26, that 26 represents 8% of the surveys that were completed. Cottages were 69, and villas were 23. This year, out of the surveys that were completed, um, apartments represent 10%. Cottages represent 58%. And villas represent 31 percent. Hmm. So the question is, and we're going to pose this question to resident council, so resident council get your thinking caps on, how do we get more people from cottages to respond to the survey? How do we get more people from apartments to respond to the survey? Because based upon our actual occupancy, only about 52 percent of the people that live in an apartment reply, reply to the survey. 67% from cottages replied, but 82% from the people who live in villas replied. Is it because, because it is, is it a technology thing? Is it people don't wanna do the survey because it is paper? We've tried to reduce the size of that. So that's an interesting that's an interesting concept that we've come back to. Now, we're gonna go back to here because I think I probably lost you is er essentially what this shows us about every eight years. So if you kind of look every eight years, you have an increased number of deaths among residents. Let's just call it what it is. You have an increased number of deaths. Now, it can range from six to nine, but typically eight from my time in the business, eight years is normally around that. So you can expect more resident deaths during that time. Why? I, we have no idea. And we believe it actually, the only reason, the only thing we can contend with is that it is your, your residents are aging. We've tried to track um, diagnosis, residents by diagnosis and comorbidities to see if maybe perhaps people with heart disease, 
cycle through that, a lot of it has to do with when you come back through and you look at somebody, the average age of a resident, so if even a resident was moving in today, is 83 years old, and now they've been here for five, six years, we'll say eight years, 83, they're here, they're 91. What is the life expectancy of somebody who is 91? I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know. One of the stories, one of the stories I like to tell in regards to uh, this, so I'm gonna get off topic just for a second, is that a woman that is 80 years of age moves into a CCRC. She pays her entrance fee. And at the age of 80, what was the, what's her life expectancy? How much longer would you expect her to live in a CCRC? Five, 10, we're gonna, we're gonna spin that out. We're gonna say 15 years. At the age of 80, we're gonna say 15 years. This particular resident lived another 33 years another 33 years. Now, what point am I trying to make on this? First of all, you were smart enough. You don't have the slightest idea what your future health care costs are going to be. You signed a contract. We're going to guarantee we're going to take care of you, regardless of your ability to pay, as long as you're not impaired due to any fault of your own. So you run out of money. I got to be honest with you. 80 years of age, that's 15 years after she retired. And how many of us would expect to have assets to live another 33 years? Now, now how wise is your decision to move into John Knox Village? Pretty good. Because a lot of people don't have the slightest idea. And you hear those stories out there about, and I hate to say it, you know, um, older adults eating cat food because they can't afford their medications. I have parents that are aged, 90 and 91, and they have the same issue that a lot of people have. Their, their medic medication costs are going through the roof. This year, my mom is gonna be in a donut in March. My dad won't hit it till October, but she has, she's gotta pay all that, and then, then she comes out of the donut. And how do I know that? Because I do that for them. I do their Medicare Part D for them. So I see the same things that you see. That's the whole idea in regards to a cycle. You have no explanation of why all of a sudden somebody's disease process kicks in, heart disease, stroke, a variety of other things, and other people just continue to march on. And I'm gonna tell you it comes down to wellness. It comes down to how healthy do you keep yourself. But the average still comes out to be about eight. All right, now this is gonna get confusing because you're gonna see numbers, then you're gonna see blue numbers. Just remember, the blue numbers that you see are from 2022. I tried to give some perspective. I can throw numbers up here all day, but Joe, let's, what does that mean in perspective? So residents who volunteer, and then the average monthly hours of volunteering. So on campus, residents who volunteer, 63% of the people who responded volunteer on campus. That's a good number. I like that. Last year it was 58. That's what the fifth, that's what the blue 58 is. Off campus, 29% of our residents uh, volunteer off campus, 27% last year. Average monthly of average monthly hours of volunteering. Um, it's up from 14 point, it's up to 14.3 from 13.98. Let's call it 14. That's up slightly. And then off campus, that's up slight, that's down slightly from 10.52 to 9.57. Make sense to everybody? Now, I've got about 50 slides this very same way. I'm, I'm teasing. It's only 47. Um, why do we want to know that? Well, rough numbers, you take 63% of the people that responded to the survey. We know that on an average, they volunteer 14.3 hours. So we know that those people volunteer about 2,700 hours on average. Make sense? 63% times 300 times 14.3. That's how I come out, that's how I came out with the number. 
Now, that's a lot of volunteer hours. That is, residents of John Knox Village have a tremendous impact on uh, the community, the greater community. And yet, those, those people also volunteer better than 10 and a half hours outside the community that have an impact on the greater Orange City, DeLand, Deltona area also. I like that. That's why I track that. That's why that's a survey question. Now we're going to start speeding up and go a little quicker. John, not John Knox TV, last year it was 81%. It's down to 65%. These are residents that use John Knox TV and the portal. You'll see that uh, residents that you, residents use Knox TV went from 81 to 65 um, portal went from 94 to 96. 94 to 96 is a great movement. Why did it go down, Joe? It's that nasty square word that we always use and it starts with an S. Centrics. All right, I thought you'd like that one. Um, 23 communication services, this is the satisfaction. We went from 80 to 81% in satisfaction with John Knox TV, and the portal went from 85 to 65. Hmm. All right, that's something for us to work on. Now, typically what we do is we show you the one slide of use, then we show you the other slide of satisfaction, and then we put those two slides together so you can see what it looks like together. It's, you've just seen this information. It just presents it in a little bit different a uh, little bit different perspective. Same numbers, a little bit different. You'll notice that the satisfaction level on the portal went down 20%. It went from 85% to 65%. But we also saw an increase in the number of people using the portal. Maybe it's the increase of people using the portal that were dissatisfied with the use of the portal. We'll see. Um, we did receive a lot of feedback in regards to the portal. The portal is slow. We've tried, we've worked with the company. We've done a number of things. We're stretching out. We're not going to release everything that needs to be done on a Monday because we know Monday the portal gets slammed and with all those users getting onto the portal it is going to slow it down so we're going to stage we're going to stretch those things out um, throughout the week when with that release does that make sense to everybody please shake your head yes good now yeah this it looks a little bit more confusing than it really is <coughs> village life magazine Last year, 96%, it's 98% this year. Village Weekly, 95 to 97. Um, activities Monthly Calendar, 94 to 95. Bulletin Board, 79 to 88. These are the percentages from last year to this year of people that were satisfied and very satisfied. Um, you'll see that Knox TV, 80 to 81%. The Portal, 85 down to 65. So that's been highlighted, and we know that we need to work on that. Village Friends, 91 to 92. Uh, Coffee with Meetings went from 89 to 96. Um, even, even the chat with the CAO went from 85 to 90. And then um, Resident Quarterly Board Meetings, 87 to 91. And then the bullet Village Alert, we just started tracking the Village Alert um, and satisfaction level of the village alert, that's 92%. That's why you'll see no information. There's no blue number above that because we didn't ask that question. That was a new question that we asked, we added. Make sense? Okay, so really, I'd like to see that. I'd love to see that. There are a couple of areas that we have highlighted. Obviously, um, the portal website, whatever we did with the coffee withs, apparently you liked, and that was all directors last year that did most of the coffee with, so you could learn about them. We have a couple of new things, again, this year for coffee with, so we hope that uh, you'll enjoy those. Food and dining. Now, I just want to, I want to let you know we did change the questions for food and dining. Some of the information I needed to, I extrapolated. I added, like, for example, when you look, uh, when you look at some of the things, the overall satisfaction level, um, it we tried to match things up in menu, and I'll get to that in a second. But you'll see SH Cranes was 80% last year. It's 87%. Bay Dining, actually 86 to 81. Our thought with that is that Bay Dining was closed for part of the year. Uh, Valencia and the Bistro, they were not on there last year, so they're new questions. 
Oak Tree Grill, 89 to 92. Curbside pickup, you guys are killing me with curbside pickup. 89 to 95%. And we still have a number of people that love curbside pickup. Now curbside pick is, pickup, for those that are new, is something that we started during the pandemic that residents could go and pick up their and yet we still have a good number of people, about 70 people who love curbside pickup. Um, now, why does that disturb me? Because I don't know kind of what's going on socially with these people. I don't know that they're getting out. I don't know that they're getting activity. They're getting exercise. They're getting other things. And I will guarantee you somebody will send me an email after this saying, Joe, why are you picking on curbside? I'm not. It's, it makes it a little bit more difficult to track residents to make sure that um, they're healthy and they're staying healthy. And that's our uh, primary motive. And then Oak Tree Grill went down slightly. I don't know that I call it st statistically significant from 97 to 96, but the scoop stayed at 95. Now, this is where I extrapolated some of the data because we didn't ask we just asked, for example, um, menu variety. We just asked one question. We didn't go through each dining venue and ask about menu variety on each dining menu. Because I'm going to tell you, on any, on any given day, we have about 90 different things that you can eat, entrees that you can eat. I'm just going to tell you, that's pretty impressive. Y that impresses me. And I've been here nine years now. 90 different items that you can eat. And yet, Menu variety went from a 59 to a 69. Hmm. We're not understanding the question, or we're not understanding the answer. We're not understanding something here. Um, but you'll look at appearance, the dining rooms, that's, I don't even call that statistically significant, 88 to 89. But 59 to 69, um, it, we had some improvement, and we did work on the menus a lot this year but we only asked one question. We didn't ask four. So where, you get, where did I get the 59? I took the menu variety from the other dining venues, I added them up, divided it by four, and came out with an average. That was the average. Make sense? So that's some of the data that I extrapolated on some of these things. So if you're saying, hey, Joe, you're not comparing apples to apples, you would be right. I just took a simple average. Dietary needs, 69 to 70. Food quality, 78 to 76. Food quantity, 91, it stayed relatively the same. Food presentation, 86 to 88. Service quality, hours of operation and employee courtesy, we didn't ask those questions last year. So your question to me would be, okay, Joe, that's great, but what is, is that something that's disturbing to you if you get something in 88, 89? We strive to see numbers that are at least a 75. If everything's above a 75, then we start really dissecting and start drilling down. Here, I'm just gonna tell you, menu variety, dietary needs, and food quality are the first three things that we would look at here. So as we go back and we look from planning from the results of this survey, those are the three things that we would look at. Now, would I include anything else in here? I might, but um, we know the food quality, the food that, we, the quality of the food that we've been getting from our vendors, is just as bad as what you get at Publix or anywhere else. It's, um, sometimes it is slim pickings. Uh, dietary needs, um, so those three questions, we will come back, we may send out another survey to ask for more information, um, just ask a few questions just to clarify what you're thinking because what we may not match what we think we're, we're interpreting. Off campus, and these are the residents that um, who use this. Again, the blue at the top is 2022. And you'll see that most of these numbers improved with the exception, exception of dining trips. Dining trips went from 45% down to 38%. Not significant. Uh, sporting events, 11 to 13. Concerts, 58 to 61. Uh, grocery shopping, and then what we do is we look at the satisfaction level of those. We think that's pretty acceptable. Um, 
we will look at um, even so if you look at sporting events which is the lowest it went from a satisfaction level of 81 to 89 so what we do is we give Candace a thumbs up and say hey you're on the right you're on the right path uh, dining trips 94 to 98 99 98 I'm coming backwards on this if you're wondering where I'm at uh, grocery supplies is 97 to 98 96 to 94 on 90 mall shopping that could be at any mall any given mall and the theater is 97 to 99 and again the only thing we do is put that together you can look at those numbers at the top but they're going to be confusing they're two slides shoved into one and now you have all that information on the top but that kind of lets you know uh, concerts 61 percent of the people use it and 98 percent of the people who use it are satisfied theater 57 percent and 99 percent of the people who use it are satisfied okay activities on campus we we do we go through a number of little things we examine so i'm going to do it this way the taste of went from 47 down to 44 guests entertainment went from 76 to 79 celebration dinners 59 to 62 three percent improvement or three percent improvement in utilization 37 to 42 for games chef's table 21 to 28 Family style dinners stayed flat, as did arts and crafts um, activities stayed flat. Uh, religious events and programs, 56% of the people went to 65, and then educational programs, 66 to 70. Now, the only thing we, we know in regards to this is if you tell us something is that you would like to see more or what you would like to see more of. Because if I get an email that says, Joe, I would like to see more, I'd like to see more grocery shopping trips. Okay, why? Is it just for you or is there a group of people that don't want to drive anymore and just like the benefit of taking the bus, getting their shopping done in an hour or two and then getting back on the bus and coming home? And because that's, that's kind of what they do. 14% is a significant number of residents when you look at the survey, but do we need to, can we move that to 28%? Can we double it if we add another day or two? Because if we're doing the driving and you're not, it makes it, it, makes it safer for you, make, it makes it safer for us. So then take those same programs and look at the satisfaction level. Celebration dinners is the one that is the red flag here. Celebration dinners was 85%, went down to 78%. So whatever we did at celebration dinners, the satisfaction level went down. Taste of went down. See a, see a pattern here? Still around food. Still around soup food. Um, guest entertainment went up slightly. Uh, cards and games went from 89 to 97. Chef's Table, 89 to 92. Family Style Dinners, 96 to 90. Again, food item. Arts and Craft, 86 to 91. Religious Programs and Events from 95 to 97. And Educational Programs, 89 to 97. So now, as we expand what the questions that were asked and we cross-reference them, it still comes down to food. You s the Taste Of, um, Celebration Dinners, Chef's table, while wow, chef's table improved 3%, it lets us go back and find out, okay, who was, the, who was the one doing the cooking for the chef's table and what was the menu for the chef's table? Family style dinners went down 6%. That's significant. All that makes sense? So we're focusing on focus our effort, food quality, menu variety, and um, other items that deal with food. You want to spend any more time on that slide? Neither do I. Um, amenities and services. Now, if you remember this, this year what we did is we changed things up. We didn't talk about buildings. We talked about amenities because we don't have one pool. We have two pools. So we talked about pools as not instead of a place. We talked about it as an amenity. 
And so what we decided to do is we reorganized questions. We asked them, and we asked them slightly different. And we have we've got what I think some decent responses. Um, level of satisfaction, for example, beauty shop went down from 87 to 85. Corner gift shop went down 91 to 85. And I'm going to tell you, I can tell you exactly what the issue is on the corner gift shop. The size. It's not big enough. And it will never be big enough. Okay? I dealt that... We dealt with this before I came here, we dealt with since I've been here, and we continue to deal with it. The corner gift shop will never be big enough, even though it's been renovated and it looks good. Um, and by the way, if I can put a little plug in for them, they are now selling clothing, now selling clothing. Um, so then you have the Spiritual Life Library went down from 97 to 90, Main Street Bank 97 to 92, the Gathering Place, 87 to 88, and then the Library, 85 to 89. While most of, the, the, most of those are acceptable, we know that we know the chapel is a, um, a project that we have on our list. The Gathering Place, just we just got done. The Library was just recently done, as was the Corner Gift Shop. So Main Street Bank, hmm. we'll look at them in just a minute. So these are the numbers for the beauty shop. Are you asleep yet? All right, I'm going to go a little bit quicker. The thing that we really look for here is any pattern which make which would have pulled down the overall satisfaction level. Appearance that would have that could have potentially done it. Adequate space. Again, they're like the corner gift shop. They will never have enough space. Um, they everybody wants more space. Um, service quality. Um, we will look into that and types of services is pretty good, 96 to 94. And here we go. There's my, there's my little plug for the corner gift shop. We just focus on there, 74 to 61 for adequate space. That brought down the overall satisfaction level. But the other numbers are pretty acceptable. Appearance was 100% last year, it's 98. Service quality, 100% last year, it's 97. And overall satisfaction went from 91 to 85, but adequate space is the issue. Chapel, same thing. Adequate space was 53, it jumped to 65, um, and the overall satisfaction improved. And the appearance, I don't know that we did a lot to it, but um, that too is something that we have on our list to do. Spiritual Life Library, 97 to 90. I don't know that most people even know that we have a Spiritual Life Library. Um, service quality, 100% last year to 88, 92 to 87. Main Street Bank went from 97% to 92% overall satisfaction. Their appearance was 100%. Adequate space went from 100% to 83. And then service quality went from 100 to 92. Now everybody knows that Main Street Bank is a vendor that rents space from us. Gathering place, numbers are um, now. Here's a funny. Last year, gathering place, brand new. 97% satisfaction as far as space adequacy. Put a couple tables, put a bunch of puzzle tables in there, and uh, put new furniture in there so people can sit and they can chat. It goes from 97 to 84. Let's just call that one bewildering. Service quality, 85 to 87. Um, appearance went from 80 to 93. We did get that little coffee bar in there, and it does look pretty fantastic. But adequate space went down 13%. Library, <coughs> we didn't ask questions about appearance, adequate space, or service quality on the library last year. That's why you'll only see that the overall satisfaction rate for the library went from 85 to 89 percent. So there's only one blue number. It's not that Joe forgot the other three numbers. That's the only question that lines up. If that makes sense. This one is the very same thing. Recreational activities. These are just residents who use that. And you'll see that the numbers 
We didn't ask, we didn't have numbers from last year in regards to this question, but 68% of the people who responded to last year's survey used the putting green. This year it's 20%. Wow. We even have a putting tournament. Again, confusing to me. Shuffleboard courts, 57 down to 13% of the people. Bocce ball courts, 36 to 9. Croquet courts, 27 to 5. Um, so those are tennis courts. 8% of the people use the tennis courts. 15% of the people use pickleball courts. And you can see the rest of those numbers. Now, the next thing you would expect to see is satisfaction levels, right? Here you go. Now, you'll notice that tennis courts and pickleball courts, we didn't have that question on our survey last year, so there's no number for that. Um, we opened them this year, and the people who use them, they're 100% satisfied. But just to kind of putting green, fewer people are using it. 68% to 20%, but satisfaction went from 98 to 90, 91 to 98%. All right, I'll make you a deal. If you can get 68% more people, 68% of the people to use the putting green, I'll set up, saddle, for, settle for a 91% satisfaction rate. Okay? And I'm serious. The numbers of satisfaction, all they indicate are areas that we need to work on. I would rather see utilization, more people using things, than see a 98% satisfaction. All that tells me is about 60 people are satisfied they're using the putting green when last year it was three times that. Does that make sense? Am I crazy? Okay. So shuffleboard courts, 97 to 92. Bocce ball courts are flat at 83. And then um, croquet courts are, I'll call it flat, 78, 77. Uh, card room, 87 to 95. Uh, arts and crafts went from 80 to 87. Billiards stayed flat at 83. Ping pong, 91 to 84. And then the hobby shop, that's a new question that we had on ours. 98% um, of the people uh, that used the hobby shop. And it was 58% of the people who responded to the survey used the hobby, used the hobby shop. Either they're in there or they take something in there or they have some experience with the hobby shop. So, got to be honest with you, I kind of like that one. That, that's a nice 58% of the people. And then this is the confusing survey. All the little numbers on top, they're just blended that so you can, you can kind of see them all together. Fitness center, again, kind of boggles my mind. Utilization. We don't have one fitness center, we now have two fitness centers. You figure that the number of people participating in fitness would go up. Yes? Am I crazy? It went down? It went down by 9%? You had twice the opportunity to use a fitness center and it went down 9%. Exercise equipment, last year 96% of the people used exercise equipment, 76%. Now, don't blame this. Don't come back to me and say, Joe, that's that big cycle of people that passed. Ah, no, no. You can't use that on me. That's, that's not going to fly. That's a significant number. People who use the exercise equipment, we doubled the amount of exercise equipment, and it went down by 20%. 20, 20%. Um, exercise classes, 61 to 52. And then dance classes actually went up. 18 to 19. So we need to have more dance classes? Hmm. Now, satisfaction level, you would again expect you'd, you'd less people, greater satisfaction level. 95 to 97, 94 to 97 for overall, overall fitness center. I'll take a 95% if more of you go ahead and start using the fitness center. Fair enough? I mean, that's nice that it's 97, but 95 is acceptable, and I get 9% more people using it. Um, exercise equipment, 94 to 
I think sometimes the new exercise equipment over at um, the clubhouse can be intimidating for people because they don't know how to use it. Please get with Kalina. She'll be happy to show you. It's excellent equipment. You're not going to hurt yourself. Um, and then exercise classes, 98 to 97. And then dance classes stayed flat at 94. And those, those are the numbers. So this, how do we approach this? I'm just going to tell you how we're going to approach it. We're going to look at to find out who's using the exercise center. And then we're going to find out who's not using the exercise center. And then we're going to develop classes for people to use the exercise center. If we have to bring in dance classes for teach people how to do the tango, that's what we'll do. I want you to use that space. We didn't create all that space for it to collect dust. We want you to use that space. Nothing hurts my heart more than to walk by a fitness center and it's empty. And don't, don't kid yourself. My staff know, hey, 5 o'clock, there's nobody in the fitness center. I can go work out. And they're right. 5, 5.15, the latest. There's nobody in the fitness center. Now, if you went down to the gathering place and looked at puzzles, that'd be, that place would be packed. So... I want your ideas. To me, this is kind of confusing. If you have ideas, share them. Send me an email. Hey, Joe, what about an exercise class for men and a workout that you work out three times a week? Fine. We can try something new. I'll be happy to try that. An exercise class for women to do that makes no difference. Men and women don't like to work on the fitness equipment together at the same time. I understand that. But how do we get people motivated to go to the fitness center and use the fitness center? And it's just not the fitness center. It's the putting green, the bocce ball courts, the croquet courts, shuffleboard. How do we get you motivated to do those kinds of things? Pool. Another one of my love things here. Now, I think there's kind of... Um, there's bad information here, I'm, and we didn't, I didn't really realize it until I was going through this survey. Overall, pool usage went down 1%. We stick in a pool, a brand new pool, open it up, and utilization of the pool goes down 1%. Hmm. You guys don't like water, huh? I'm teasing. You know I'm teasing. Um, exercise classes, the number of people who use the pool for exercise classes, the people who responded to the survey, we know that's not 100%, but some way, shape, or form, 100% got in there. Individual use, 100%. Appearance, 20% of the people who use the peer, uh, appearance. Nice satisfaction levels. Again, 98% of the people, of 25% of the people who use the pool, 98% were satisfied. Satisfied or very satisfied. Exercise classes in the pool, 81 to 97. That's phenomenal. Um, individual use, 95 to 96. And then appearance, 100%. That's great. How do I get you to use the pool? It's a beautiful pool. I would use the pool. And then those are the numbers just that you just push together. 26 to 25 overall. Uh, percentage of people who use the pool. Central Bark. Everybody knows what Central Bark is, right? Yep. Um, wow. Wow, we let dogs in and everybody starts using Central Bark. It went from 8% to 38%. That's what I like to see. Last year, 8% of you used Central Bark. Now 38% of you use. That's a 30% increase. I don't care how you look at it. Well, it's what? Five-fold almost. And the satisfaction ratings went up. This is a prime example of what I like to see. Overall utilization is higher, significantly higher, and satisfaction is high. Overall satisfaction went from 92 to 98. Um, appearance, 92 to 96. Size, 92 to 100. 
You guys are being kind on that one. You're being kind. And you've already seen both of these. All right. This is something that we track. Now, why do we track it? Because we want to make sure that you get the care that you need. We have a pharmacy. Did we need to have our own pharmacy? No. You would have found a place to go get your medications and get your drugs. Um, medications, let's just say it that way. Get your medications. But what we did is we opened a pharmacy to make it more beneficial to you, to make it easier for you. Your phar the pharmacy here at John Knox will deliver to your door. Do you know that? Probably all you do because you show up here. But they deliver to your door. So the number of people last year, the residents who used the pharmacy, was 85%. It's 68. Now, that's 68% of the people who completed the survey. The actual number is 78. Now, Joe, how do you know that? Because that's a number we track internally on the percentage of residents in independent living that use our pharmacy. Because... Can we get, we used to have it at a th penetration rate of about 30%. Only 30% of our residents used our pharmacy. Then others started to find out, well, hey, that's kind of nice. They'll deliver to my door. I can go through the drive through They can get it like that. Um, can't beat that, and you can't. I get it delivered to my desk. I like it. I'd give them 100% satisfaction rating. So um, we track that specifically. So 68% and it was 85 last year. Again, please, that's the number of people who completed the survey. Occupational therapy services, 57 to 44% used it. Um, nurse practitioner and clinic services, 82 to 70. Visiting physician services, 34 to 24. Resident nurse and medical response is 77. We didn't break that out previously. That's a new question that we, uh, we decided to start asking. And then home health, 15% to 38%. So me coming up here and banging on this podium and saying, use our home health, use our home health, use our home health, actually worked. So guess what I'm going to do this year? Use our home health, use our home health, use our home health. And those are the satisfaction levels. And I'm going to go the reverse because we just got done with home health. So more people are using home health, and the satisfaction level stayed the same. I'm good with that. Um, nurse response, medical response, 91 to 100 percent. That's I like that. Visiting physician, 89 to 86. Uh, nurse practitioner, clinic services, 98 to 100. Occupational therapy, 98 to 95. And pharmacy services, 98 to 96. Now, nurse practitioner. Do you know most communities like ourselves don't have nurse practitioners? Martha Cullen is a John Knox Village employee. She's not a contractor. She is our employee. And I can announce, effective as of Monday, I believe, of what it, is what it was, is she now has her own NPI number so we can bill throughout, we can bill out, out of the pharmacy and not have to worry about using a different NPI number, which makes it easier for you. We're in the process of expanding the contracts that we take if you have a contract or you have health insurance that you want us to be able to uh, reach out to, we're reaching out to the big ones, but please let us know. Don't let me know. Let Nicole Vega know. Um, so these, are, these two are nice numbers. We'd like to see those. Now, occupational therapy, you'll see that it went from 98 to 95, and you'll see that... Um, the residents who used it went from 57 to 44. Again, that's only 44% of the people who responded to the survey. Because I can tell you they moved their caseload um, in therapy, outpatient rehab, outpatient therapy, they moved their caseload from about 18, and they run in excess of 30 on any particular day. So they've done a nice job of increasing their caseload. Um, so... Um, w that's another thing that we track just to make sure. Medical response, 91% 91 to 100% um, satisfied or very satisfied. Um, and then this is Majestic Oaks. Last year it was about 6% of the use residents used it. This year it's only 3 
and it went from 70 to 63. Housekeeping, now we get into the regular departments. Um, schedule, what we did is we duplicated the questions and we tried to create consistency with the questions across the board so we had to extrapolate some information. Scheduling, scheduled deep cleaning or quality, or scheduled cleaning quality, 92 to 94. Now, annual cleaning, 83 to 92. We struggled with that, so we normally have, we normally go ahead and just contract that out. Um, housekeeping uh, department response went from 96, 97 to 96, down slightly, and employee courtesy went down slightly from 99% to 97%. Security, uh, just can't argue with these numbers. And gatehouses, 99%. Um, patrol, emergency response, employee courtesy. Uh, you, do you think there's room for improvement? Um, transportation. Now, we did away with the inner village transportation and out off campus transportation. We just came up with the transportation. Because if you tried to pick this number, intervillage transportation was about 24% of the people who responded to a survey. I can't match that up with this because this includes both. But um, people who use either intervillage transportation or use transportation to go off campus, whether it's a dining event, it's a concert or whatever, we just kind of want to know what the transportation needs are. So about 88% of the people re responded to the survey use our transportation in one way, shape, form, or another. And then those are the satisfaction levels for transportation. Again, um, ease of scheduling, what we did is we kind of extrapolated some data from both off-campus and uh, off-campus off and uh, inner village. So ease of scheduling, 95 to 96. Excuse me, uh, pickup and schedule went from 98 to 97. Driver safety, 100%. Vehicle comfort and cleanliness, 96%. Trip confirmation, 96% to 98%. And I think Monica had done a very nice job. Monica and Sandy have done a nice job with that. And then employee courtesy, 99 to 100%. Maintenance, um, work orders timely, 89 to 92 and that is pretty consistent to what we have because that is a number that we track internally through Works Hub. About 92% of work orders are responded to within 24, no more than 24 to 48 hours. And they're frequently, it's 24 hours. Um, service quality, 96 to 97, and employee courtesy, 100 to 99%. Uh, grounds and landscaping. This is the other red circle, red flag, if you will. Landscaping, uh, if you remember last year's survey, we had resident unit landscaping, then we had building landscaping. Try to deviate between your individual unit and the overall campus. We decided to wash that, um, and we looked at it from a bigger, a more macro position. Land landscaping went from 78 to 70 uh, percent. Tree plant and uh, tree and plant and plant bed care went from 69 to 58 uh, percent. Grounds department responsiveness went from 87 to 71, and employee courtesy 99 to 97. So we have some work here too. So right now, what are your what, what are you what items are you walking away with? Food, menu variety, food quality, um, and grounds. All right, would you recommend John Knox Village? We have 269 people who would recommend it, um, 22 who would not. Remember, there were 300 people who took the survey, and then so there were people who decided not to answer th the survey, not, an not answer this question. So 269 people would recommend, 299, put that in a graph form, 90% of the residents who responded to the survey would recommend John Knox Village. Now that's up, um, that's up 7% from last year. And so I'm pleased because it's headed in the right direction. And when I look at the survey, this is the first question I look at. So 
you'll see that uh, the 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, even 17, um, all of those are 95% and above. And as we, we cruised it down into 17, we didn't do uh, a full survey. And we look at 19, 20, 21, those have declined. So now we're looking, um, we're at 90% and we're headed in the right direction. The one thing I wanna, the other thing that's very, very important and that gets more done than anything else. While there's information here, some of it's confusing as we discussed. Um, others of it is not as confusing, but what we would like the most are your comments. Comments get more things done than anything else. You can, you can be constructively, give constructive criticism without making it personal. Um, and we appreciate that because we're sometimes when we look at this, it's confusing and we don't, we don't know what to think. And then a couple of people hit on the same theme as we read through the notes and the comments that you've made. And it helps give us directions. I know, I think Joy just finished the comments on Monday, either Friday or Monday. Um, she just finished the comments. So those will be going out to all the directors. The directors will share them with managers. And from there, they'll take this survey, they'll take the comments that they get, and they'll put together a plan of, a plan of action to address those. We've already talked about where we're going to put our focus our efforts and there's a lot of things that we've done there's a lot of things that we continue to do some things come together slower than others um, and one of the things that we're looking at is changing our food food provider our food vendor we currently use cisco we went to them a number of years ago from gordon's and we've been really unhappy with them since and it's why haven't you so you're gonna you're gonna say joe so then why haven't you changed well, really, the food quality that's out there affects everybody. It's just not Cisco or somebody else. It affects across the board. And when you go ahead, and I think this is a good example that I think the resident, last year's resident council, Mr. President used, Mr. Herod used um, from a meeting, I think this made the biggest impression on him, is you know, we have a chef who goes ahead and orders 50 pounds of wings. Well, he needs 50 pounds of wings. This food provider can only provide 25. He's got to go find somewhere else to get either another 25 pounds of wings or he needs to make an adjustment in what he does. And so then when you run out of food for that particular issue, it makes it frustrating. I like wings. If I was to go to the dining venue and I wanted wings and you didn't have wings and I was looking forward to them, I'd be a little disappointed. Now, I think I could find something else to eat for that particular day, but somewhere in the near future, I want some wings. We understand that, we try to make that, we try to make that adjustment. And as we continue to fill out our campus, we get more residents on campus, and we extend the hours of our dining venues, and we uh, try to accommodate people, um, while we will have things that we miss on, hopefully we hit the mark a lot more than we miss it. So, with that said, I kept it right to an hour. You would have thought I timed this thing out, didn't you? Any quick questions that I might be able to answer? I know, Shannon, Shannon's like, Joe, you said you weren't gonna do that. 